Welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle, the sh- podcast that tries to answer life's questions one drink at a time. I'm Josh. I'm Sean. And uh, this is the July episode, uh, celebrating, I guess, among other things, our independence, uh, July 4th. If you're not in the U- United States, I'm sorry for everything that we do. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I'm, I'm not... We're number one. Yeah. We're number one. USA. Just USA. remember. Just remember, it's apostrophe America. Yeah, we're shit. We're shit as a country. We don't have freedoms. Uh, like great, we have we have freedom of the press. We have great things that that we have done over the years to. Right. We're allowed instill, to say we're allowed to say that we're a crap country. <laughs> yeah, we can instill some self perceived uh, 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 perception of freedom, but I mean, come on. The government makes people disappear every year. Just all of a sudden, they're just gone. Like they never existed. <sighs> so when so, you guys stop hearing from me and he gets a new co-host, you'll know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, took me out into a field and they just told me to look at the flowers. Aren't they pretty? Oh, that's weird. There's some sort of panel van outside my, my window right now. Oh, they're coming for you too? Great. All yeah. right. Cool. Yeah, well. I knew, I knew this place was bugged. Dude, uh, speaking... So speaking of bugs. Oh, no, no. Speaking of that whole thing, um, apparently there was a kidnapping at my kid's school. Oh, no. Well, that's all right. It's all right. He woke up. Fucker. <laughs> I'm back in the game, baby. I was actually concerned <laughs> for your kid's safety and well-being because I've met your child. Yes. But but cool. Yeah, you want to you want to play those fucking games, Chief? The we'll best part is games. the best part is my, my my show notes. It says kid space napping just just to be on the safe side. Ah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, I love you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, st- I'm drinking the, to that. Yeah, right. What are you drinking, sir? <sighs> that good, huh? L- lemonade and uh, Kentucky Owl. Wise Man Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey at forty five point four percent. Nummy nums. I am drinking Kilburn Irish Whiskey, and I'm chasing it with some water because the I'm it's a little warm where I am. Yeah, I'm surprised you're not drinking it on the rocks. It is on the rock. It, it's on a big old whiskey okay. ice ball. Okay, um, so one rock whiskey it, on the rock. Well, apparently something happened because it's it came out as half a half a ball. So it's a half a rock. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you'll you'll get an air bubble trapped in there. No, I, I just didn't fill it enough, I think. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like it came out cracked in two separate halves. No. Like it came out in half. Okay. By the way, uh, listeners, thank you for listening. If you're listening to this, hopefully you're a patron on our Patreon page. Um, and if you're not, well, maybe you're listening to the, f- by this point, maybe it's a free episode over on the uh, Room 6 YouTube channel. Either way, thank you for listening. Please like and share. And of course, subscribe if you're on the uh, YouTube channel. Why not? Um we talk about whatever we want for about an hour, and uh, we also answer listener questions. We talk about maybe some weird news things that's just going on, which <laughs> we got our pick lately. And um, maybe even learn a little bit of science. Who knows? Uh, if you have any questions, you can actually email us at twobrainsonebottle at gmail.com. That's the number two and the number one. So two brains, one bottle. Um, speaking of questions, and speaking of kidnapping... Uh, <laughs> what was your favorite? We have a question actually from uh, Larry, and Larry asks, "What was your favorite cartoon show as a kid, and why?" Oh man, yeah. Uh, Strap in, listeners. I can't. I can't do favorites. I've. I can just start listing them off, like Doug, All Real Monsters. Um, uh, fuck. Oh shit! Um, Animaniacs, mm-hmm. so, um, Looney Tunes. Now fucking... wait, wait! But we're talking when you were a kid. Now I know yeah. you're about ten years younger than me, but Animaniacs was not when you were a kid. Yeah, it was. Maybe it's in reruns by then, but that doesn't seem right because Animaniacs came out when I was in college, the first time. I'm talking when you were like seven, eight, nine. I mean, I assume that's what Larry's asking. Uh, Animaniacs came out in 93 and 95. I was three years old and five years old. Is that young enough for God, you? You fucking so... asshole. Man, you I'm so fucking old. asshole. <laughs> now, 
before I was so rudely interrupted with the discredited fucking barb at my age because I'm, I'm not old enough. I'm sorry. Go on. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt age. you. Uh, I didn't mean to be rude. I'm sorry. Uh, Looney Tunes. I liked the... Oh! Oh my god! I'm going to count it as a cartoon because it's not live action, but I'm going to go with Celebrity Deathmatch. When that was, mm, when that yeah. was, it's claymation. I, I consider claymation animation. It's not animated in the sense of like. But you know that wasn't meant for kids. Oh, I don't care if it was meant for kids. She asked what I watched when I was young. Fair That's, enough. I watched horrible shit when I was young. Like fucking um, yes. Tales from the Crypt. That explains so much. <laughs> yeah. Like I grew up with horror shit. I grew up with scary stuff. I didn't grow up watching kids stuff. Nice. I mean, but like, yeah, Doug, so, Not Real Monsters, Looney Tunes. Okay. Yeah. Well, for me, being 50 this year, uh, in one month from today, God damn it, it burns. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, Did they even have pencils yes. to animate cartoons when you were a kid? Ha uh ha. -huh. Or did you guys just take sticks and draw in the sand? <laughs> what we did was we beat our friend's face in until our hand was bloody, and then we drew and on the cable. And then you used, the, yeah, used the blood as the paint. Yeah, mm. that's cute. That's great. Yeah, I yeah. remember that from a wrestling promo in like 1984. So, Did we come up with something newer? No, for me, it was, well, of course, of course, Looney Tunes. You know, and I'm talking the original Looney Tunes, not the remakes. Um, the Looney Tunes that you look at now, you're like, ooh, that didn't age well, or that's questionable. <laughs> um, but also, the original Thundercats, original G.I. Joe, just the, the, car, the, the, the TV companies were just trying, what can we do to hook the kids? Because we mean, want I to did, sell toys. Yeah. yeah, it was all about action figures. Right. So, you, you had things like Thundar the Barbarian. Oh, oh Herculoids. Herculoids? Herculoids. Oh, 90s kid. Fucking gargoyles, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love the gargoyles. But again, I oh, wasn't a kid then. With, so. with, with, um, with Spawn as the head gargoyle, the animated... Uh, Wait, or, what? Not the anim there was an animated Spawn series show that came out, and I can't remember the actor's name. Um, big black dude. I can't remember his fucking name. Give me a sec, I'll pull up the cast. Anyway, the 90s cartoons I was talking about were, mm. like, you were saying, Thunder of the Barbarian. Um, did, did you grow up with the... Yogi Bear? Well, of course. Hey, boo -boo. Okay. So, Yogi hey, Bear, here, here's... I'm going to throw some names at you, see if you... Larry, we're going to co-opt your question here and turn it into Spawn. A... Spawn also was a cartoon in 97. Oh, I remember. I, I, I don't know if I'm... Fucking young enough for that to count. Well, here you go. So here's some that I'm going to throw at you. I, I'm looking Keith at David. A little... Okay, no idea what that. Keith... Is. Oh man, yes you do. So look when you see his photo, you'll know. Well, I'm going to throw some cartoons at you from the 70s. Okay, from the early 70s. So I, some of these were even before my time. Yes, it, it is a so. Thing. So some of these are going to be like the Hanna Barbera cartoons. Exactly, right? Hanna Barbera. Yeah, dastardly and muttly and and the whole. Uh, the grape ape and the race, the whole race from the characters, but also um, you had I'm down the hair I'm bear down. bunch, pebbles and the bam bam, pe pebbles and bam bam, yeah, of course Flintstones, but pebbles and but bam bam when they grew up, yeah, um, and Hong Kong Fooey, oh dang, I liked Hong Kong Fooey. You had the uh, what speed were the buggy. Three, what were the three bears that were dressed up like the three musketeers? I don't know. I'm. I'll, I don't know. It's okay. Uh, it's uh, no, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm, I so Hanna Barbera is of... Hanna Barbera is also like Pink Panther, Jetsons, yeah, um, uh, Wheelie and, and the Chopper Bunch. Um, of course, uh, well, Archie wasn't really a cartoon then. I was no. thinking comics, but uh, of course, Scooby Doo, the original Scooby Doo. Oh, the Super Friends. Oh, duh, yeah, Super Friends, and the Fucking... oh, and the Hall of Justice. Yes, um, and Speed Buggy. I think I said him already. Oh, but, Speed Racer. No, Speed Buggy. No, and, I know that, but Speed Racer was also another cartoon girl. Well, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, now that I think about it, see, part of my memory gets confused with what came, what Cartoon Network had going for a long time. 
Right, but Cartoon Network in its infancy, yes. at least, was oh. was really big about like doing reruns. So there was a show that in America had a different name than in Japan where it was written. And I'm just going to look it up real quick. That's okay. Uh, Ren and Stimpy, another classic. That No, I was, I was in college at the time. I'm old. But no. G, G-Force, Guardians of Space. Okay. It uh, actually used to be called Science Ninja Team Gachaman. <laughs> but That's... but so I remember oh to this day G Force I would get pumped because they were they were, it, it were in space and they had they all each had their own little weapons they uh, had vehicles that could modify and uh, link up so it was kind of like Voltron a little bit like Plant um, Morph uh, uh, not Morphin Time um, Power Rangers thank you Power Rangers I can't want to say pl- Power Planet. And um, Captain Planet? No, I, I can't want to say Power Planet for some reason. This but, is going to be the most ADD-ridden fucking episode of just awesome. yelling out cartoon names in the middle of just well, sentences. But the thing is, Jabber the thing is when, you think about cartoons, when you think about cartoons from that time, all right, and it <laughs> yeah. was like, this was mid-80s, but still, you know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm still a kid. I was born in 72, so I'm 9, 10, uh, maybe even like uh, preteen. But when you think about cartoons from that time, G-Force was the first time... You saw pe- bad guys died. They got blown up, man. And mm. uh, I mean, it wasn't like oh, suddenly there's blood all over the screen, but they got, they got, they got curse bloated. And each character of the of the heroes, and even some of the bad guys, they had like their own backstories. They had their own traits and and flaws and quirks. And you knew what to expect from them. And th- th- this show in America laid the the groundwork for a lot of. What we would come to see from Voltron and from um, just a lot of different shows where we've got a team and they can come together and, and fight as one and then they can also have their own individual things. But I, I really dug this show for some reason. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, Larry, I'm going to go with G-Force, which I completely spaced on until, no pun intended, uh, until now, if I had to pick one. Yeah, if I had to pick one favorite show as a kid, favorite cartoon show as a kid, it it would probably be Ren and Stimpy. It it just it was a rev it was irreverent, it was raunchy, it was everything I loved about the cartoons I wasn't supposed to watch. And you know, again, that explains a lot. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Oh, oh, actually, I'm reading an article about G Force. I digress. I I I, I was wrong. G Force Guardians of Space came out in '86. But before that was Battle of the Planets, and that's the one that I grew up on, which came uh-huh. out in seventy eight, and and that was you know Battle of the Planets, and it was a very much Star Wars esque type thing, only you had a team of five plus their the the the, the, the older guy who would coordinate the team and stuff. Um, anyway, yeah, wow. The way thanks. you were talking about the way you were talking about uh, reminiscing so fondly about the villains mm-hmm. reminded me of uh, Batman 66 with Adam West. Oh. When you had, when you had villains come on the screen, you were like, oh, okay, oh. we're contained in this little Gotham city. Yeah. Typically these crimes happen at the museum or the art fair, the things with yep. the valuable stuff or the, or the bank. Like they happen in normal places, but it was the villain and it was, it was like villain location. It was like playing fucking Clue. Villain location and weapon. And right. if you got those three things succinct, it was like, oh man, this is a great episode of TV. It tells a very simple story about how this guy's mad at the world, and this is what he's going to do to get back at it. And he got fu- like it. It almost makes them empathetic villains. Right. I, um, I, I, but- Larry, I have to thank. For, sorry, just the listener, Larry. Thank you so much for that question. You opened up a rabbit hole that we both just didn't know we needed. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, uh, absolutely love it. Uh, I also missed my dad's favorite show from when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Batman the Animated Series, ninety two to ninety five. Oh yes, and also that, the Brave with Kevin Conroy Batman. Oh, oh yes, I am Mark vengeance. Hamill's Joker. I yes, the oh. best, the best. I remember when that I first saw the very first time I saw. The, the opening for that. And you're just like, yes. whoa, whoa, what is this? This is different. This is not Brave and the Bold, Batman. This is not Super no, Friends. No, this is... And th- this is not Brave and the Bold. This is not Super Friends. And this is not, like, holy exploding bomb, Batman. 
This is yeah. dark shit in a greasy, grimy Gotham. There, there, bad shits happening all the time. This is like year two, year three. Yeah. Batman. He's a great detective. Uh, also, X Men the animated series, another yep. fucking timeless classic from the nineties. Oh. It's a shame. It's a shame that you, oh, Rockers Modern Life. Like you can go on and on with nineties cartoons. It's a shame you're oh, yeah. born. You know, and you know you were a kid in the seventies and the eighties. It's, it's not though because a lot of because, what you are digging on is standing on the shoulders of what I was digging on. 100% standing on the shoulders. Yeah. Because it's because everyone has to lay the foundation work somewhere. Mm -hmm. But someone also has to make it perfect, and that's what the 90s were. I mean, look at me. Pure perfection. <laughs> the Tick! Spoon! Oh, yes! Bad bad guys, stop that evil doing, or whatever. With chair, chair face and... His, Arthur the Arthur. Rabbit was a sidekick? Yeah. His, no, oh, no, no, no. He wasn't a moth. rabbit. He was a moth. He was a moth. He was a moth. Check yourself, yes. Oh, man. That, yeah, this this is prime ooh, time. Ooh. Like, this is all the stuff this I miss about this, my dad. This, this, is this is more college years uh, Cartoon Network type stuff, but The Max with two X's. Remember that? Big purple guy. Uh, it is not ringing a bell, but I've always been better with faces than I am with names. Which is why I need a computer when I look at shit like this. Well, here's, let me get, let, let, let me just put it out there. The Max. No, I never, I never saw that. He's he's Ugh. he's a like he's it. he's a slightly confused, mentally, you know, not all there, homeless superhero who tries to protect his social worker and friend named Julie from an omniscient serial killer, Mister Gone, as in not here anymore. But and it's he he some and so the cartoon is sometimes in the real world and sometimes not. And this is still a cartoon, mind you, but this was not for little kids. Yes. This was definitely, I'm going to grab a goon, and he is going to be in pieces now. This is like the tick with a, with a, even more mental problems. And and just, uh, uh, like, if... if Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool. If, but, Rimmer. Yes. Yes. I, I hear you. But yeah, like, this was a, for me, this was watching... I'm talking about the, the violence level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, def I mean, just the artwork, there's blood splatters in the background, you know? Yep. So, um, it's... Yeah, this was in the... Uh, this was in 95, so smack in the middle. Um, I think it started... It was originally... Yes, it, it started as a, a comic book, a graphic novel. Like a lot of good cartoons uh, lately. And um, and then a couple years later, they picked it up as TV and said... <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll throw this on the screen and see what happens. And it, it ran for a while. This was right around the same time as um, Daria, the spinoff from MTV's Beavis and Butthead. Yep. Yeah, so. And now, now we've, we've, we've lost the listeners completely now. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I'm about to lose them. So the Max was created in 93, ran till 98, and it had 35 issues. Yes, uh -huh. 35 issues before being collected. In paperback to DH Comp, D, uh, DC Comics's Wildstorm imprint. Yes, uh, I, I tried they, reading one of the uh, uh, like a collection of them, and yes. I couldn't make it through because it was just too much. I was just like, "Whoa, I need a break." Uh, MTV did a thirteen episode animated series from April till June in ninety five. Oh, that's right. It was on MTV, not a, not a Cartoon Network. Sorry, that's but that's why you could get away with some of the stuff. Because it was on MTV. And MTV, this was, sorry if there are any young listeners listening, MTV used to stand for music television, and it's where they debuted music videos. Yes. It was a much different platform than the reality spewing garbage that comes out of it now. Pretty much every song on the radio had a music video on MTV, uh, regardless of genre almost. Wait, well, regardless of genre. And then eventually VH1 took over kind of like, we're a little bit softer. And then you had like country TV, CTV, and stuff doing that those genres more soft. Yeah, country yeah. TV is even softer than MTV. I'm I'm never gonna listen to a country person that tells me the country goes harder than MTV. That's simply <laughs> fucking outrageous. No man, MTV. He's, he's got MTV puts so many tits and asses on my screen. There's no CMTV could never fucking handle that workload. I agree. And I wouldn't want them to because they wouldn't. It wouldn't look right. Oh, you always wanted the like, God, MTV. Yeah. MTV 
women were better than CMTV women. They all look the same on the country stuff. They're always blonde. They're always about five, yeah. six to five. You know nine. what? If you ever want to see young, you know, younger people who, who who have no idea what we're talking about, pre-reality show MTV. If you ever want to see kind of like a a collection of everything that MTV was about, watch the music video for. You've got to fight for your right to party by the Beastie Boys. Because you had VJs coming through that house. You had all sorts of hot people coming through the house. And you had the Beastie Boys. If you're that young, I would ask you to listen to um, We're Not Gonna Take It by Twisted Sister. That also will... Because yeah. that is a, not only is it a bitchin' video, but it is a fucking anthem. You know what? For, for current times. I saw a clip of, recently on some sort of social media platform of um, them playing. And now, I don't know if it's the original line of A Twisted Sister, but Dee Snyder was singing, and boy can still belt it. Oh, yeah. Like, it sounded, um, like, just like um, the, was it Foreigner? For, somebody did the House of Blues, and, and I saw that performance. And I was like, hey, respect. You just didn't stop. Yeah. You know? You gotta, um, you gotta love that when you see an old guy just go swinging for the fucking fences. Right. Like, just crushing batting practice balls just over the fence, over the fence, over the fence. Right. You're, like, You're old, though. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing this anymore. You shouldn't. Like, the songs aren't lost on you because you wrote them, but. You're right, right. Old. How is all that still working? Oh, it was just like uh, the the seventy year, seventy five year old in the gym lifting more than you. Just, he, he just out, never stopped. Outrageous! I trip that person. I do. I, <laughs> I trip that person, and then I point and laugh when they fall because nobody should be lifting more than me in the gym. That's why I go alone because I'm lifting the most in that gym at that time. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Sp All right. So, from cartoons to where? We're still in the vein of growing up. Um, it turns out, a weird science fact, when we're born, we're born with about 300 bones. But by the time we're considered grown, we have 206. They, right. They merge as we grow. We lose bones. Yeah. Right. They fuse together. Yeah, we don't lose the mass. We lose the amount. And Right. That's that's also kind of where fontanelles, you know, the soft spot on babies' heads comes, comes into play. But I was just like, that's a 94 bones just aren't there anymore. Like, what? I understand the coccyx, you know, the tailbone. I understand the fontanelles. But what else becomes, you know, not there anymore? Um, so it was just one of those uh, weird things. Please. Around age 40, this is for you, too late for me. Less bone is, is replaced. <laughs> I got nine more years, dog. Yeah. I got fucking time before this happens. So after reaching your peak bone mass, yeah. which which is around age thirty, your body yep. your body replaces about as much as it loses for a while. So there's a stasis, and then right. around age forty, less bone is replaced, and this causes the bones to become thinner and weaker, increasing the risk for osteoporosis. Right. So that's why I drink lots of milk. Brr. I hope it's human milk, because we don't need bovine milk. It's not about need. I just like the taste. That's cool, man. Not everybody likes pus and blood in their milk, but... Yes, I've heard the argument. Thank you very much. I know you've heard it. Maybe our listeners haven't. We're doing this show for more than just you and me, you know. Yes, dear. There's Anywho. some There's some person listening right now going, Mom and Dad, stop arguing! Stop fighting! <laughs> I want to... Uh, I hope I get to live with Dad. <laughs> get to live with Dad. <laughs> so, um, now your your lady of your life is coming home from being away, right? Uh, she's coming home from hanging out with her stepsister and going to the grocery store, but not like away away. Not from work away. Away, 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 away. Cool. Hey, here's a question for you. Not... In my show notes at all, not related to much of anything. But, if you had to pick one genre of music to never hear ever again, let's start a fight in the comments, what would it be? Can I only not listen to one genre ever again? Can I make a For the list? sake of brevity, this is only an hour of ah, podcast. Brevity. 
In the gravity. interest of... You know how much I hate this. In the interest of time. All right. All right. Um, Excuse me. Enjoy that. I, cannot, I can't listen to this one type of music ever again. I'm going to say fuck you to the genre, and I'm going to say anything that doesn't inspire me, I won't want to listen to again. Oh, uh, you're copping I, out on the genre question. So, to to then in turn be true to myself, I would have to ask, what genre of music least inspires me? Easily EDM or Electronica. Fucking 100% can get rid of that rate, that garbage and you're, replace it with people playing instruments. You're, you're saying that the, the, the laptop uh, music, right? If you if you can play your instrument by hitting the space bar, you can go fuck yourself right now. Okay. If you don't know what it means to fret an instrument or to play with keys, you you go go suck a bag well, of dicks. Now, here's a question for you. What if they, they did all the music, played all the instruments, but then their DJ, they show up and, you know, they're saying, here's all the music I made. See, they're musicians, but they're... they're... If, you're doing the, if you're doing the sampling yourself, then you're not using the laptop as the instrument. You're right. using it as the medium for which the, your, your music is being And I get what you're pushed. saying. You're saying the people who... Everything they put out is a bunch of samples and, and things that they've found. Samples or and that shit they... you've stolen. Nothing you've actually fucking sat down and created other than an arrangement. Which, don't get me wrong, arrangers... Th that's a whole other are, thing. Yeah. ...are fantastic people. And they and it takes a lot to be able to look at a broken song and go, how do I make sense of this? What's, that's what arrangers What's missing, do. yeah. Not what's missing, but, you know, what's the best order of this? What do I do? How do I use the information in front of me, the, the formula in front of me, the chords in front of me, and how do I make a story with that? How do I... Tell a tale. How do I spin a yarn? Because if it if you can't if it if it doesn't move, if it doesn't have motion, if it doesn't go anywhere, it feels stagnant, disconnected, and just wrong. Right. And that's how I feel about listening to shit that's just sample after sample after sample. There's no fucking context. There's no there's no meaning behind it. It's just oh, I thought it sounded cool. Like great, I'm glad you thought it sounded cool. But I need a little bit more in my musicianship. I I I I'm, I think I'm with you. You're, you're picking up what I'm putting down. I'm being yes. very poor about phrasing it. <laughs> I too am yelling at the same clouds. Yes, old man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, for me, what what detracts from me for me from that world? I don't want to live because it's more. There's they're going to say there's more than one genre for all that stuff. If 100%. it's if it's the same song. For the entire song, then I have a problem. If you are, if it's just house music, if it's just, you know, designed strictly, let's get people dancing for the next 15 minutes. And and there's no breakdowns, there's no, you know, then I have a problem with that. I used to think that I had a problem with, like, noise core, grind core, all that, you know, rawr, 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 stuff, until I started reviewing their music and started reading their lyrics. I'm like, this is actually really well written. They're choosing to challenge you to figure out what they're saying. That's why I fucking love that stuff. Yeah. I, I, by the way, Lamb of God dropped a new track today. I don't know if you've heard it or not, but it is a lot of that. <laughs> Forcing yeah. you to listen to what are they really saying. Now, see, and I love, that, I love that as a medium. What I also respect, though, is when acts like that include li liner notes, include lyrics. <laughs> You're like, here you go. I, 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 I find it disrespectful when they don't. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I, I had to start telling people, uh, no matter what their genre of music, okay, you want me to review your music? Great. Send me the digital tracks, send me the lyrics, and send me the artwork, please. Don't make me hunt for this stuff. Don't make me figure it out, because I'll misquote you, which I did to somebody. And and it was just a singer-songwriter playing an acoustic guitar and singing some stuff. And I somehow misquoted her, and she laughed, and I got off with it. I got away with it, but uh, man, I felt so bad. So yeah, when I have bands where their logo is almost illegible because of all the spiky bits i'm, I'm like call, lyrics we please call those, we call those stick figure bands you know the blair witch stick figure yeah it's, yeah that the fucking name artwork looks like just a bunch of twigs 
What I love is when a branching I, out of different places. Like, love guys, I understand you yeah. all. They all. It's all the same font. They all use the same one. It shoves the letters together and it just looks right. like a bunch of lines. It's like, can none of you fucking draw? Did yeah? Did, did you not think on a bill? This is five to, bands with that. You don't know who's going right. on. Right. That's why I I love some of the bands that have been on the show are in that vein of music, but they chose we're gonna make an image out of our logo. And the words will be legible, but then the image is all the spiky bits. Like Pariah was one. They have something that's got, you know, it's, it's this kind of like almost crab-like looking thing with little pincers and stuff. And in the middle of its little like, you know, arms or whatever is Pariah was one. Nicely written. Very legible. You can figure out what the hell it is. But it still fits with the whole vein of the the, the music in the night. Um, or even uh, like Minus. They, they're a little bit of stick figure logo. But it's totally legible. What it is is mostly oversized letters like stretched up and down, and then they're kind of bleeding. So you're like, okay, I get it, and I can still read it. Benny. But then the other ones where you're like, is that an A? Is that an O? Is that a what is that? Is that a number? Is that a color? What the fuck is that supposed to be? I had a band give me a t-shirt with their logo on it. T-shirt. So it's like, you know, across your chest, and I still couldn't figure out what the hell it read if they hadn't told me. Anyway, guess what time it is, Sean? I think it's time for weird news, but I I don't... I'm worried because we missed Florida last week. Or last month, I guess. Uh, no, last no. Month. Florida did not... It, it, we were celebrating Pride. Florida did not deserve oh. it. <laughs> I didn't know you maliciously left out a whole fucking state because it was Pride Month. <laughs> Actually, technically, I left out two people. Florida man and Florida That's woman. True. So, I... Uh, sorry, actually, you, you asked me You know. asked me uh, if I knew what time it was. I'm sorry for sidetracking you, and I'm sorry for, for breaking away. I happen to have a Florida nice. story up, which is why I was thinking about it. Oh, please, if you want to join... Is it weird news time, Sean? I, I don't know if it's weird news time. It's, it's sad news time. It's a much less... Aww happy version of your weird news segment it's it's weird news it's weird news we found some news on the internet and here we go <laughs> two arrested after man is found in convicted felons arcadia home the desoto county sheriff's office found a man with three active arrest warrants for charges of drug possession at the location of a convicted felon's home in arcadia Okay. They say opposites attract, but this looks like samesies attract. Richard Dale, Samesies. yeah, Richard Dale Lowe's three warrants were for possession of a controlled substance without a prescription, evidence destroying, tampering with, fabricating two counts, and two counts of possession of paraphernalia resisting officer obstruct without violence and non-moving traffic violation with a suspended license. A hey, he's got a whole trifecta there. If you're going to do it. If you're going to do it. If you're going to commit a crime, you may as well commit all the crimes. Okay. According to the report, when so, Lowe was arrested, 25.23 grams of methamphetamine were on him. Wow. I don't I don't know if you've measured anything in grams recently. 25 grams is a fucking lot, bro. That's a lot. That is enough for That's enough for a frat party. Well, the home located at Ooh, not saying the address. <laughs> Holy shit, almost, almost yeah. right there. While the, while the home was being Please. searched, a convicted felon identified as Keith Ross was living in the location where Lowe was found. Ross was also arrested for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon on two counts. Possession of uh. meth and possession of paraphernalia. I was going to say damn. your little joke about do all the do all the crimes, and I was going to say, well, there's no gun, but I was. I how dare <laughs> you? How dare you assume there wouldn't be a gun issue in Florida? <laughs> Florida man, <laughs> we're in Florida. The temerity. <laughs> <laughs> it's awfully precocious of you. Don't get me wrong, but you're wrong. Oh, Florida. Oh, as Florida. soon as you think Florida's going to be like, oh, you're growing. Oh no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're just exactly <laughs> what we expected of you. Oh, man. Hey, look, I contributed, no. Josh. I added minutes to our show. Now you can't tell me I don't do anything anymore. 
I never everyone said behind that. the scenes, he tells me every fucking month how I don't do anything of this show. Now he's so much better than I'm kidding. I'm kidding. His face right now is in shock and horror. Why, he doesn't know. He doesn't that? know how. He doesn't know the backlash that's going to come from all the comments. Don't make me go Florida man on you. I don't think you have it in you to go Florida man on me. I think you have too much self respect. Ooh, that's a bad thing. I tried to cut it. I tried. To, I literally tried to cut myself off from saying it, but it still came out. Sorry. You you know me way too well to know that to say that. So, okay, from wow. So from Florida, we're gonna go over to Paris, France. Ready? Oh, hey. Pack your bags. Bon voyage. You may have heard of this story. I don't know. Apparently, uh, you know the Louvre, Louvre, the art gallery, the Louvre. A man in a wig. Oh, is this the guy that tried to break it? The Mona Lisa case. Yeah. He, he, man in a wig throws That's cake right. at the glass protecting yeah. Mona Lisa, and 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 he did it. A thirty-six year old man. He uh, was uh, pretending to be an old woman in a wheelchair. I did hear this, and yeah, and and he shouted at people to think of planet right. Earth, uh, because climate change. He, it was climate uh, change. He also, oh wow, he also was seen throwing roses in the museum yes. gallery, and, and, and like. I am okay. Yeah. All of this, cake, cake all is... of this, to bring awareness to climate change. And then I believe in that article later it talks about the different offenses that were uh, towards the Mona Lisa. I believe someone damaged her elbow in in an attack somewhere. Uh, she got a she right. got a scratch somewhere else, and then they put the glass case in front. Someone attacked the glass case once uh, physically. Unfor- yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we don't know where he's from. He, he, he may be from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> we get a double Florida story. But here's his quote. Think of the earth. There are people who are destroying the earth. Think about it. Artists tell you, think of the earth. That's why I did yeah, this. Yeah, he fancies himself an artist, uh, but really it's just being a schmuck. And, uh, like, uh, yeah. I, I have no word. I have no response to this. Like, it's just one of those, where's your keeper? Who let who? you out? Let you out. Who took the straight jacket off of you, man? All right. Speaking of being let out, are you ready for another? Oh, no. one? Are you getting the let out? Oh, Uh-oh. okay. <sighs> sure. A courthouse, a courthouse in upstate New York, was closed for fumigation Tuesday after hundreds of cockroaches were released during an altercation that broke out at an arraignment. Who brought the cockroaches? I- so <laughs> I know I'm I know I'm skipping more. straight to the end of the article. <laughs> yeah. Why? So, okay. Oh, New York is trying to give Florida a run for its money. Uh, no, uh, four people were arrested at the state capitol, and um, let's see here. A defendant who started to film the courtroom proceedings was told to stop because you can't do that. People have privacy rights and stuff. In the altercation that followed, hundreds of cockroaches brought into the courthouse in plastic containers were released. So, yeah, how did, like, you got to go through security and stuff. You do. But I guess plastic containers are not going to set off the, uh, they're looking for firearms. What? Metallics. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that's ridiculous. A 34-year-old woman in the audience for charges related to the altercation, including disorderly conduct. Uh, you, you just don't say. <laughs> Um, Obstructing governmental administration and tampering with physical evidence. I believe all of this ah. was a ruse to try and uh, manipulate some evidence, it looks like. You think? Uh, what transpired is not uh, advocacy or activism. It is criminal behavior. It is criminal with behavior the intent, with the intent to, yep. to disrupt a proceeding and cause damage. So it sounds like they're in deep dog shit. Yeah, and if it wasn't just, I'm trying to distract, like, but even so, it's like, how is that going to somehow translate into somebody else going free? I think it was just a decoy to to impose chaos. Someone, but someone again, sounds, what it looks like someone read the front cover of The Art of War and the back cover of The Art of War, but missed out on all the good shit in the middle. <laughs> I understand use a distraction. I understand, you know, 
you have an end game trying to either recapture evidence or destroy evidence or harm, you know, disrupt the proceedings. But there's a way to do it so that you're not connected to it. And I believe that is the central message of Sun Tzu is don't get caught with your hand in the fucking cookie jar, man. Yeah. Distract him with this other hand full of cookies. Right. I'm glad I butchered Sun Tzu for anybody that read The Art of War. It's not, like, uh, it's a, it's not so, like it's a big publishment or anything. Uh-uh. It's it's a new new thing, right? Now, yeah, right? yeah, brand new, that's, that's, right, just released, <laughs> just released. Certainly not thousands. No, of it came years out with anyway. a new BTS album. <laughs> <laughs> BTS and the art of Sun Tzu. Right. <laughs> uh, so one last thing here, one last bit of weird news. And by the way, listeners. Aside from questions, we love any weird news you like to send us, so feel free to send it to us, either hit us in the comments or two brains one bottle at gmail.com. Uh, when you think of Las Vegas, mm, Sean, what are some things, just perennial things that come to mind with Las Vegas? For t- Think tourists. Okay, if I'm thinking touristy and I'm thinking Vegas, if we're doing some kind of word association thing... I would say the Strat. I would say Fremont. I would say the Strip. Uh, roller coaster because you got the, the one at the top of the hotel. Fountains. You got to go see the Bellagio fountains, but like at least once. I think that's about. It's about all I've. All, all I'm getting from from the hint of tourists. So if you'd like to steer me in a different way, let's say let's say that you and your lady friend are visiting Vegas, and you decide, hey, while we're here, let's get married. While we're doing it, let's have Elvis married. Oh, uh, okay. We're talking about wedding chapels. Yes, and unfortunately, wedding chapels in Las Vegas in Sin City. That are using Elvis impersonators or, you know, as to, to the, marry yeah, people. As the, uh, the head of the ceremony, yeah. Well, it turns out the people, the licensing company that controls the name and image of the king, are they're, they're ordering Sin City Chapel's operators to stop using Elvis in theme ceremonies. So that may be going away. Good. I don't know, man. There's a certain kind of kitsch to it. Let me ask you something. If somebody looked at you and said, I don't know, there's kind of a kitsch to it in regards to a memory of a dead loved one, do you give a shit about what other people want? No. You care about what is being done with your family name, with the member of your family that's being... I mean, I, I can only see, assume in their, is... in their position, they assume that he's being mocked, right? It's not the... It's not the best uh, look. But it doesn't say the family of Elvis the people. Presley. It says the licensing company that controls the name and image. So for them, it's just lost revenue. Ew. Because it's do you realize that do you realize that the sit Las Vegas's wedding industry generates two billion no, a year? No, I didn't know that. That's a lot of money. Yeah, and El, Elvis themed weddings represent a significant number of those ceremonies. Um it took it my question is why now? Like, what took so long? You know? You had all of COVID to, to ruin him. Um, so, one chapel last weekend had their Elvis impersonator change instead into a leather jacket, jeans, and a fedora for a rock and roll themed ceremony. But, I mean, especially if you're a huge Elvis Presley fan, this is your dream. Wave. No. I, I disagree fundamentally right there. If you were a huge Elvis Presley fan, you are probably siding on the side with the licensing holders. No, I mean the kind of Elvis fan that literally everything in your house is Elvis related. Then you need help. You're going to want to get... You're going to... Well, hi, welcome to Las Vegas. You're going to want to... Uh, we, it, we're not Florida, but you can see you it. Find, right. you, they have <laughs> therapists in every state, man. I'm sure Nevada has a couple. But that's yeah, an obsession. Well, I'm that's just a, that's saying. That's a fucking clinical yeah, yeah, obsession. Yeah, yeah. Just, and I'm saying if you're obsessed with Pres- with Elvis Presley, you're going to want to be married by Elvis Presley. If you can't be married to Elvis Presley. That's all I'm saying. I 
I Chuck personally, I I never liked Elvis. I never gave a shit about his fucking career or what songs he did because they didn't. It's it's yeah. not my stuff. It's not my it's not my music. It's not it's not for my generation. It's not for me, and I'm okay with that. But right, I mean, but... if it's licensing for the sake of licensing. I have to go with whoever's entitled to the to the win here. Like I don't, I I got him. I know. I got to not. I got to not care that it's two billion dollars into an industry that I'm not trying to put any money into myself. <laughs> right, but the thing is, is that you you have to see it from a like we're in Vegas. We want to do the the touristy thing. We want to get married by Elvis, quote unquote Elvis. And, and we don't care who has the rights to the name or whatever. That's what we want to do. We can get married by some some guy anywhere. But we're in Vegas. And we want to do this. And I can I can see it from that. Like, it ruins the moment that, that you were trying to create that, that, that memory. Like, it's a memory. Yes, I remember my wedding very well. Uh, but I would have remembered it a lot more if Elvis had been my, you know, officiant. Um, so... I don't know, but I just, it's one of those things of just, oh, well, here's someone else ruining people's good okay. times. Then let me, let me compound that with, if you're really an Elvis fan and you know he's dead, does it fucking matter? Are you okay? Okay. Yeah, well, your your well, screen went blue, so it just changed color. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I uh, maximized the window okay. all of a sudden. No worries. Um. I feel like if you're really that big of an Elvis fan. Well, you're right. I am. You don't. Yeah, I know. I'm always right, man. You don't. You. I'm going to put this. Go on fucking Craigslist. All right. And and find somebody who is licensed to officiate. Give them an extra 75 or 100. But fucking you pay for the Elvis outfit then. Like, why is it the responsibility of the person performing the ceremony? If you want it so bad, you well, fucking pay for it. That's that's where I'm at with it. Like I don't, I don't, mm-hmm. you know, legal. legal oh, I agree. To, I know to, there, there's ways around it. There's yes. always ways around it, but it, is it really that important to you, or do you really just like complaining? Is where I have to pull myself out of it because because I don't have any emotional connection to it. Right. Well, yeah, and again, like if it if Elvis was alive, if this was impacting his money and his family's money like his family's set come on you know i uh, so fuck him josh is that what i'm hearing from you fuck the presleys they have enough money they don't need any more well michael jackson got a good start anyway (laughs) no that's that's all i figured out why i went why i was blue all of a sudden on camera (laughs) why were you blue all of a sudden because for the entire podcast i was looking at notes on a notepad screen which is all bright white and when I minimized that when I got rid of it my background is blue <laughs> so suddenly hey Scam Likely's calling I haven't heard from them in forever I'll call Scam you. Likely is calling I haven't heard from them in forever that's a, that's a <laughs> oh, good yeah. one that, keep that uh, in the repertoire that's a, that's a great dad <laughs> joke oh it's there so awesome uh Anything else before we say goodbye to the listeners, sir? I think you should do your wrapping up notes before I do mine. I'm, I'm trying to still... I I went straight from work to here, so I had no time to think about other shit before I got here. Um, if you mm-hmm. give me a minute, I may have some closing words. Some closing words. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to say, listeners. First of all, hope that your June was uh, happy and safe particularly if you participated in any pride-related activities, as we talked about in the last episode. There definitely is a little bit of a danger element, more so that in, lately than there was in the recent past. But uh, the good news is that the majority of people are not the problem. So I hope that you have a great month of July. I hope you, you know, if you celebrate uh, Fourth of July Independence Day, hope it's a safe one for you there. Don't blow off anything. Don't. Uh, I'll go with the safety briefing I heard online. 
Don't add to the population. Don't detract from the population. <laughs> don't make it worse. <sighs> All right. Well, then, uh, I guess all we have to, then to say is uh, thank you for listening, and uh, please like and share, and subscribe to the Room 6 YouTube channel, and, uh, oh yeah, remember to be amazing. And uh, we'll see you next time on Two Brains, One Bottle. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba.